Hello and welcome to the Voice of Todd. I'm Tom, and today we're going to take a look at The Expanse Season 5, Episode 9, Winner Pisaki. So, with this episode, we're gonna we're gonna get into it like we normally do. But before we get into the review, if you enjoy this or any of my other content, please do hit that subscribe button, leave a like on the video, drop a comment. All of it helps. It makes a huge difference, not just to to me um, and knowing if these videos are landing as I'd like them to, um, but also with the YouTube algorithm gods, who we all know and have to serve if we're, we're putting videos out on the platform. Uh, but as I say, it, it helps me improve. I do love talking to you guys as well. Haven't really had much of a, a chat about The Expanse this season. Um, I know I'm, I'm new to this and covering the TV show, but let me know what your thoughts are, especially after this episode. We'll get into what I think in a moment. But, well actually, let's get into it now. Uh, this is the the penultimate episode of season five. We've had eight amazing episodes up to this point. There will be spoilers for this episode, as usual. Um, so if you haven't seen it, I'm more than happy to wait. You can come back once you've had a brew and a sit down, enjoyed the episode, and then we'll talk about it together. If you have seen it, let's jump straight in. We open with uh, Marco on the Free Navy. He's looking very tense this episode. Really tense. Uh, he's lost some some ships in a skirmish he's had with Mars, I think it was. Um, he's just generally causing, or he's having his ships, not necessarily him, but his ships, cause mischief around the belt um, and the outer galaxy. And Corral isn't going to make his mood any better with the news that Alex and Bobby now are discussing exactly the same issue the change in the distress signal from the Chesamoka and what it means obviously they've looped Holden in uh, and over on the Rossi Monica's probably into the idea Bull really isn't keen uh, and also he mentions the fuel situation with the Rossi but Holden's having none of it he gives him an absolute stare and Bull skulks off to see what he can do about conserving fuel. Holden is out of his combat armor though, we'll see how long that lasts. And then we head over to the Chetzamoka to check it with Naomi. Um, as we do, the, the Expanse does this wonderful thing of showing you what the ships look like. And we have an amazing establishing shot of the Chetzamoka it's wonderfully rendered it looks amazing the slow pan across it so you get a good look very Battlestar Galactica which I the camera work and the the dog fighting in Battlestar Galactica is some of the best shot action scenes I've ever seen I am biased to the series but it, it looks so good and they've really taken that idea with the expanse I think and this looked so good and we're also getting a feeling of how dire things are for Naomi, uh, which we already knew from last week. Um, but we get the the survival moment where she's she's drinking moisture from the the com terminal and having to get creative with keeping herself alive, which which makes sense. It's a nice touch. We then jump over to Lake Winnipesaukee. And Amos, Clarissa, Eric and the Baltimore gang have landed at the resort, or the Elite Holiday Resort, and they're breaking to the hangar. The good news, there's a ship. The bad news, it doesn't fly. And the staff are still in residence. And Eric doesn't like complications. Eric's generally not happy this episode. I don't think anybody's happy this episode, in all honesty. <laughs> but they have a ship. Clarissa can pilot it. And Amos can fix it, right? Over to Luna and we get a look at the holographic memorial tower that has been put up and, and the staff are putting the names of the loved ones that were lost in the attack on Earth. Avisral is standing there. She's watching a guy put a name of, of a, a loved one on there. And we suddenly hear cheering. 
as a news feed flashes up and the UN have had a surgical strike against Palace Station. Straight into a UN meeting and Viserala is not happy with Pastor's retaliation. Um, she's initially in damage control mode. She quickly gives into her her emotions and does a very impassioned speech. Um, she confirms that Arjun was killed in the attack on Earth. Um, this I think this is is so incredibly done, and you really feel it because Avasarala is one of the one of the many characters that you just connect with. You've had you know five seasons now, and you really feel it. Wonderfully done. But despite her desire for revenge and the willingness to single-handedly rip Marco limb from limb, that's not what she says. But that's how I'm putting it. Uh, she doesn't want any part in killing innocent belters. She's the most human one in the room. And as new military targets are discussed, including Tycho Station, a couple of other mentions there that we've heard of, she stands down and walks away, causing the civilian advisors of the UN Secretary General to walk away with her. Over to, I think it was the DeWalt, uh, one of Drummer's ships, Drummer's command ship. And Oksana is really getting used to keeping things from Drummer. And we get a, a little setup scene here, there will be more to come from the two of them later. But back to Earth, things are getting tense between the group. Eric is a realist, and I, I know exactly what he's doing and where he's going, but he has no room for compassion. He's probably never needed to in his line of work. Um, and his mood is really starting to come through. Uh, the rest of the staff on the island show up, so the, the island isn't abandoned. There's quite a few people still here. Um, Eric and Amos tell them where to go, but Clarissa, she makes a stand. She she makes a few stands in this episode actually but she promises them protection uh, much to the ire of Amos and Eric but Clarissa is sick of the violence and wants to she wants to save as many people as she can which again is I think quite human of her especially with her progression uh, with this series we're back on with Drummer and Marco has new orders the group is to rendezvous with some other free navy ships and they're going to take down the Rossi. Now Drummer sees right through this, but she plays along even when Oksana asks for her sidearm. The trust is quickly breaking away from them. Oksana doesn't trust Drummer to do what's right for the family. And honestly Drummer is still in that broken trance that she's been in for most of the, the season since uh, Ashford died. Back on Luna, and Avasrala adds Arjun's name to the memorial wall. Um, again, it, it's nicely done, feels authentic, and she's approached by one of the UN advisors. I think it was one of the military advisors, um, and she's made an offer she can't refuse. And it seems like Pastor's reign is coming to an abrupt end with the vote of no confidence that's scheduled soon. First thing she does is go straight to Delgado. She wants to get him on side, um, but he has other plans and has joined the strike force to go and hunt down Marco. Delgado has this dream that, that he will hopefully be the one to, to end Marco himself. And we finally get the punchline of the joke that was started in episode 3. And it falls purposefully, but it falls as flat as this episode does. Back on Earth, and Amos is really struggling to fix the ship. A private security team show up. They're pretending that they're here for the good of the people. And all the supplies have to be sent to a central location so that they can redistribute and guard it all and look after everyone. Clearly it's a shakedown, and both Eric and Amos see right through it. 
and it sets up conflict for later because again Clarissa steps in and the intruders skulk off after she makes a little bit of an impassioned speech herself um, saying how many how much death and how much killing there's been already um, I mean again all of it sort of feels pretty much on brand for the characters but we'll get into that later We're back on the duel and drummer finally calls Oksana out they have a bit of a fiery conversation and eventually Oksana opens up and tells Drummer about the uh, the distress signal change that Naomi is possibly alive and honestly all I want is for Drummer to stop playing nice to Marco and just smash his face in just do something she is she's become a ghost of herself in the previous four seasons just, it's not fun to watch anymore. I was liking the whole she's wrapped up, she's emotionally struggling. We're on episode 9, she's done nothing all season. She's just cooked herself. Back to Earth, and Clarissa and Eric have a little bit of a moment. Um, there's a quite a nice... I mean, the dialogue is, is good, don't get me wrong. The writing is, is as good as as it has been. The acting is, is as, as good as it has been. Um, well, no, not as good as it has been this season, but it's it's good. But it it's getting a bit strained now. But Amos is at breaking point. Um, Hutch, one of Eric's lieutenants, who we have seen before. Um, she's played by Amanda Cordner. Uh, she offers him a drink, they have a little bit of a heart-to-heart, -heart, and then the private security force that showed up earlier decide to attack. Um... Just before that, there is a moment where Amos realises what the problem with the ship is and they get that fixed, everything's ready to go, time to leave and then the security team attack. And it's this point where the episode just fell apart for me. Um, the private security boys have the house surrounded, they're in the woods, they're pretty good shots. They're mowing down Eric's men. Um, for some reason, Amos and Eric are outside all of a sudden when surely when the ship is ready they would just send out a message to all the people in the surrounding area on their frequency and say the ship's ready get in the hangar let's go but no they have to go outside and mess around but anyway the attack happens they're taking a lot of casualties Amos is running around with a shotgun and it, it the distance just doesn't make sense I, I don't know. I don't know what rounds he's firing, but we don't even know what's going on. We don't see the security force until the end. Anyway, Clarissa gets the staff on the ship. Um, the intruders are broken into the hangar, but she just pops a mod and rips them to pieces. Uh, Amos takes a ricochet to the face, but he's fine. He's got plot armor. Uh, not that I'd ever want anything bad to happen to Amos, because I, I love the guy. He's he's one of my favourite characters in the entire series. Um, but plot armor's just kicking in left, right, and centre here. Uh, I the sequence just didn't work for a show that's done combat so well. This was just a letdown, and all the characters seemed just muddled. It didn't work for me, you know. This wasn't Eros. This wasn't, um, you know, season four. This this just felt felt really watered down. Uh, I, I don't know why you wouldn't just just get everybody in the ship. Don't bother fighting back because it just makes things worse. It keeps people there getting killed. Amos does the whole hero thing and saves Hutch when she takes three or four rounds to the stomach or whatever. Uh, yeah, he saves her, that's fine. It feels a bit stretched, but it just, it didn't flow. It felt really clunky. And we've not even finished the episode yet. But anyway, Clarissa and Eric pilot the ship out with as many survivors as possible. Amos is the only one who stays conscious while they break the atmosphere. Um, yeah, makes sense. He spends his life between 
IG situations and maneuvers on the Rossi, so yeah, I'm fine with that. What doesn't make sense is the fact that he leaves the medical tools or syringe or whatever it is floating around after he's he's healed up Hutch or clo at least closed Hutch's wounds. I'm pretty sure that it's Amos who says who tells people to put the tools away in case they enter thrust. Oh, anyway, they're off Earth. Back over on the Pella and Marco and Philip have a, a little father son moment too. Again, we know how good these two are, and it's not that it's a bad scene. It just I don't think the two of them quite connected as I've become used to in this. Um, but Marco tells Philip that Naomi is actually alive and of course he spins it to make him out like the wounded party to get Philip back on side. As expected. Totally in character. It just... It, it, it didn't land for me. As much as most of this season has with, with especially um, Josiah Chase Owens and Keon Alexander being so bloody good. Marco's just... Uh, I don't know. They just maybe they're just tired. I don't know. It just didn't. It didn't connect. But our final moments of this episode is with Naomi. She's rigged the visor to the ship's scanners, and she realizes she's not the only one in this part of space. And there's a ship coming towards her. Time for another plan. We have Amos and Clarissa finally off Earth. Drummer now knows the truth about Naomi's distress call. Avasrala is about to become Queen of Earth again and everyone else is just where they were in like episode 2 just it didn't feel satisfying this is the second to last episode of the season there is so much still to do this is the first episode that at least of the last two series, maybe of the entire show, that hasn't hooked me. Uh, I By this point I was expecting a lot more of Holden. He has been well and truly forgotten about um, this point. just The episode was a much slower pace. I'm fine with that. It builds the tension and, and whatever. But they didn't do anything with anybody. Not in a really satisfying way. Uh, I feel that they've overdone the Naomi thing now. We get it. She's stuck on a ship that's rigged to blow. She has no control over where the ship's going. She has no control over any of the ship's functions and she's trying to survive. It feels like they've just overdone it and it's taken a bit of the shine off the last two episodes and Dominic Tipper has given some of the best performances this season she probably has done in the last two episodes alone I think she's been the best thing about this series she's been that good this just again it fell flat I've loved the Amos Clarissa stuff all season it's my favorite part of the book but this just fell into nonsense in the third part, of the in the final part of the episode. And that combat just did not make sense to me. I love this show. You guys know I love this show. Um, after eight episodes of amazing, just everything, on you know, near perfection, maybe I was just expecting too much, and you can't always deliver. I totally understand that. But fear that there's still so much left to do that next week will either feel crammed or it won't be satisfying or it won't be concluded so you've got to wait until season six and the books do follow on from each other I, I get that I don't know book six I don't know if there's a time jump if it takes on straight after book five I, I don't know and at the, this moment in time I don't want to know but this just didn't feel 
I want the finale to feel earned, and this just felt like a misstep in the build-up to that. Um, I didn't think uh, that episode 9, I, my mind would just be wandering off at points. I hate it when that happens, when I'm usually so in interested in, in the show, but... But anyway, we're full steam ahead into next week's finale. We will see. Hopefully it will be everything that, that I want it to be and everything that we all want it to be. Because the show deserves to be the best thing on TV. It probably still is. On balance, it certainly still is. This is just a misstep. But there's a little nagging doubt that they're not going to nail the finale for me now. Which is a real shame. But anyway, that's for next week. We will see. Hopefully it's it's amazing again. Uh, on Friday, we will have my review for the latest episode of WandaVision. If you haven't had the chance to catch up with my reviews, there will be a card for the playlist at the end of this episode. If you want to, to stick around, feel free. Um, let me know what you think in the comments as well. I may be being a little harsh on this episode. Um, I don't know if you've seen the news from the UK but it's it's been a bit of a sore day with everything that's been going on um, for me and maybe I'm just not feeling it which is a real shame um, I think I will take a moment to rewatch this episode before we get into to next week's finale um, maybe Monday Tuesday just for myself just to see if it sparks to life um, but we have Wonder Vision on Friday, and that's a lot of fun at the moment. So check that out. Um, that will be at the end of the, the video with a few other videos that you might be interested in. Um, and thank you, as always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>